Good afternoon and welcome to week eight of sub three marathon training. Um, this is where things are starting to get a little bit interesting. I've come off the back of an easier week and now I've got the final block of three really hard weeks before we get into taper. During these three weeks, I'm going to be running 75 miles or 120 kilometers per week on average. And this is where we'll see the final real high volume and intensity that's gonna to lead to hopefully my personal best performance at Christchurch in a few weeks time. So this week I'm gonna talk a little bit about my Strava, but the key session this week is lactate threshold intervals, which is kind of interesting. And we'll talk a little bit about the energy systems and what lactate is and why your body produces it and why running just about your lactate threshold is very, very good for marathon performance. So let's nip over to Strava and take a look and see how we've gone for the week. So the week started off pretty much as expected. I ran 45 minutes aerobic along a local route, really nice and straightforward. But I have to admit the long run last week, I lied a little bit. I actually did it quite a bit harder than I meant to and I ended up with a cup for one of the top five uh, times on what's really uh, not a desperately long route, but it's pretty hilly. And so I ended up um, a little bit more tired. So at this point I had a major crisis of the faith. So I took Tuesday entirely off and I moved all of my workouts for the rest of the week back one day. So Tuesday off, I came into things feeling a little bit better on Wednesday for my lactate threshold intervals, which we'll examine in some de detail later. And I did two three, k three kilometer intervals at just about four uh, minutes per kilometer, 405 per kilometer. Um, on the <clears throat> Thursday, Thursday, I did a couple of hours aerobic with strides. That's really hard running that volume, even if it had just an easy pace on the top of a quality session the day before and putting 10 strides at the end of it. That went okay, but I think it really just improves your economy and just gives you that extra little impetus to be able to go hard towards the end of a race. So positive session there. Thursday, I did my 800 meter VO2 max reps. That went reasonably well. And I really focused on um, one of the pieces of advice I've given, you might have seen as a quote on my board from previous weeks. You've got to trick yourself. You've got to pretend you're looking forward to doing that next interval. And it doesn't make it true, but it just makes it a little bit easier to start. So when you're running up to start, you're not absolutely dreading it. So with that kind of positive attitude in your mind, I got my eight by 800 done at about 345 per kilometer, um, which is just under six minutes per mile. So I was pretty happy with that hour and a half aerobic on the Saturday morning. Nice, easy, no big thrills, great run followed by a second breakfast back home and a really nice coffee. And then finally on the Sunday morning, I went down to run with my coach's training group in South Auckland. And this was a pretty good run overall. Uh, I did um, 33 and a half kilometers, give or take, which is uh, pretty sensible. So just under 21 miles, very happy with it. Not desperately fast, but an hour and a half of it was done at my marathon pace. Um, Tough session, really good, but it's one of those things that builds up, as I've talked about in previous videos before, to enable me to maintain that for three hours. So overall, not a bad week, came in at about 115 kilometers. Very pleased with the way it ended, given that I had such a crisis of the faith at the start. This week's key session is lactate threshold intervals, but what is lactate and why does it have a threshold? <sighs> At this point, it's probably useful to talk a little bit about what happens inside our bodies when we run. At low intensities, we burn mostly fat using oxygen, and that gets turned into kinetic energy, motion. You run a little bit faster and you start to burn sugar using oxygen. Now, there's kind of a limit to how far you can go with this because there's only so much, much oxygen you can take in. At this point, you start to respire anaerobically, so you're burning sugar, but you're not using oxygen. And the product of that is a chemical called lactate. Now, this used to be thought of as a bad thing. It would cause the burning in your muscles. Now that's not really the case. And actually lactate's quite good because it itself is a fuel that our bodies can use, but it kind of gets interesting. Now it's probably best at this point that if I take you through a graph, because that will make things an awful lot easier. If we say we've got lactate here, and we've got speed here at low intensities, you don't produce an awful lot of it. It's a tiny, tiny bit. And as you get faster, you produce a little bit more, but not too much. Then you get to a certain point where all of a sudden you exhaust your body's ability to use oxygen to burn sugar and fat, and you have to start doing it anaerobically and you produce lactate and it goes off the charts. That is your lactate threshold. Now, why is this important for marathon running? 
Well, you can keep your lactate threshold up, or that pace running up, and let's say that that's four minutes per kilometer, for example. You can keep that up for one hour, but you don't need to slow down an awful lot, say 15 to 20 seconds per kilometer, and you can keep that up for much longer. Let's say, for example, you could keep that pace up for three hours, and that would be about, let's say, purely, for example, four minutes, 17 per kilometer. That, by curious coincidence, happens to be your pace you need to run for three hours if you want to run a 259.59 marathon. Now, the reason why we run a lactate threshold intervals as you run a few kilometers at this pace is because that will gradually improve that pace and push it off to the right. So what you're doing is you're delaying the point at which you start to accumulate lactate in the blood. And just as you improve your lactate threshold pace, you also improve your marathon pace. And because they're quite close together, they're really quite closely linked. Putting into practice, you end up with a session like this. So I'll run a few k's to warm up, I'll run a few k's to cool down. And in the middle, you have a number of intervals where you run for several kilometers at your lactate threshold pace. In this case, what I've done is I've run two, three kilometer intervals um, at just under four minutes a kilometer, which is about my lactate threshold pace. And you can see my heart rate is about 172 at this point. So it's in the low 170s and it kind of stays there in the second interval. I happen to know from past experience that my heart rate at my lactate threshold pace is 174 beats per minute, give or take. Uh, and that pace is, you know, on average, something like it has about four kilometers here. And that's exactly the kind of session you need to do once a week to improve your lactate threshold, which as we've seen, drives marathon performance. Overall, it's been an interesting week. I had a little bit of a crisis of the faith, but we've got there and I'm kind of hopeful. Two more really difficult weeks, uh, before we get into taper mode. Hope your training is going really, really well, and I'll speak to you in a few days.